All right, so today we're going to talk about red dots, holographic sites, uh, fixed power scopes, and some things like that that you can utilize. Uh, some of these have a budget type of uh, price, and some of them do not. Uh, we're going to decide which one may be best for you, so stick around. But today's lineup will be the ACOG RMR combo, which you can see on the top, the RMR. And below it, you should be able to see a little bit of the fixed four power reticle. Uh, moving on, it's going to be the aim point, comp M4, and you can see the chicken wire, like the uh, anti-glare in the front, to the EOTech XPS3, the Bushnell TRS-26, the SIG Romeo 5, and the SIG MSR. So all of these have been utilized in various um, capacities, and now we're going to get into it just a little bit more and see which one could be right for you. What's going on everybody? This is Darian. Welcome to my channel if it's your first time. If it's not your first time and you're a repeat offender, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. This thing does not work. Let's get this out of the way. So I want to talk about the, the red dots and the holographic sites that I've used primarily. I have used many others. I either sold them or didn't like them on, on friends. Like, you know, I mean, I shot a lot of guns that were some of my friends and I liked their red dots or I disliked their red dots. So I chose not to purchase it or ever get one. But these are the ones I've used and I can go ahead and explain these. Uh, so at the beginning of the video, I kind of had a lineup of six. I have more than this, um, but they either are the same brand or the same type, just maybe a, a different version or a newer version of it. But uh, I started off from most expensive to cheapest, but now in this video or this portion of it, I'm going to go in reverse and go backwards and start at the bottom. Um, a lot of people have a budget <clears throat> and the, the term budget can be used for something like cheap or or whatever and it's not necessarily supposed to be a cheap optic it's a it's a budget like if you have a budget of a thousand dollars for an optic you can get five out of these six if you have a budget of five hundred dollars you can get three out of these six and if you have a couple hundred dollar budget you can get once again three out of these six so it depends on what your budget may be is going to determine what you can afford now understand mission dictates gear so I have optics that cost a lot and some that don't cost enough. And it's based on what my application is for that. So I wanted to go ahead and talk about it. So let's start off right here. Hopefully you can see that. That is the SIG Romeo MSR. So this thing right here has a 1632 battery that goes on top. It doesn't have a 2032, which is a little bit bigger, more voltage. And this will last anywhere from 20,000 hours of continuous use. I don't believe it's going to be on setting like 789, something that's really high, but you can have it on a low power setting and it can last for about 20,000 hours. Um, it's quite a bit of time. I don't know who, who just leaves their optics on. Some of these optics were left on, but that was intentional for this uh, video. But in general, if I have the option to turn off an optic, I will. I'm not going to just leave one on uh, for the sake of leaving it on. I don't see the point of that. Um, but yeah, I do like this. It has like, you know, the little anti, uh, you know, water flip up sights and not flip up sights, but the little, whatever these are, anti dust, anti glare, little pop ups. And this thing is only a hundred bucks. So on SIG's website right now, you can even see me with the, with the optic, right? There's the red dot. You can see how this can be also probably annoying to you. If you are the type of person like me, you rather just stare you know, strictly at the target and not have extra stuff in your way. I hate taking this thing on and off. It always makes me feel weak. Um, there we go. So this is the $99, according to SIG's website. You can get this for a hundred bucks. Uh, you do need some sort of a device, uh, like a flathead or something like that for those of you who have a multi-tool on you to adjust the windage and the elevation. Once again, $99, $100 is not bad for any red dot. I've used this, I've been shooting soda cans and 
uh, backyards. I've been out to the desert in San Diego and you know shot with stuff like this and it does just fine. Uh, I wouldn't drop test it. I wouldn't test it during a drop test. Nope. Uh, the way I would other optics that you see on the table. And there's a reason for that. But that battery is not as common. I don't have 1632s very often. I think certain uh, remotes may take that, but it's a not a common battery. However, it's a very cheap battery. And that's the T, I'm sorry, that's the Romeo MSR, $99. Really good for somebody who's just getting into shooting. Once again, $100. I have to repeat that again, $100 for that. Uh, you have to twist this dial. It's got N1 and N2 mode for night vision. They have two different night vision settings as well. So the fact that you have NVD capability on a budget optic that costs $100 is insane. At least to me, it's insane. The industry has definitely come a long way. I will not suggest that you get either one of these optics based on, oh, I'm sponsored, go ahead and put uh, this discount code in this link. Nothing against those guys for peddling that, but <clears throat> get which one you want. If you have a budget that's gonna exceed where you're at now, you can save up and get one that's better based on your application of why you wanted to buy it. So that's that one. The next two cost the same. They're both 149 or 150. Uh, once again, straight from the website. The next one is gonna be also from SIG, the SIG Romeo 5. So I do like this a lot. It has the buttons on top. And if I go ahead and just hold down the negative button, it will turn off. If I hold down the positive button, it will turn on. And then from there, you can adjust the brightness up and down by one click of the negative or positive. Um, it has a, a 2032 battery on the side. So this one here is a little bit bigger than the 1632 on the MSR. Also, as you can see on, on the sides and on the top, it has its own little compartment for the adjustments. So unlike the MSR, the Romeo 5 comes with its own little cap and you can adjust it. So if you can see that little line right there, that is your flathead that you can adjust your sights with by literally just sticking this on top and making these clicks um, with it. So it's got its built-in adjustment tool on the optic as well. I think it's a MSRP, it's 200 bucks, but you can get it at their site for 150. You can find all of these cheaper than anything I'm gonna name possibly through all kinds of discounts, codes, flash sales, discontinued, whatever. But I'm just showing you what I saw on, on websites. So that is the Romeo 5. I might be able to show you that. So if I hold down the negative part of it, the dot goes out. If I hold down the positive, dot comes back on and I can make it brighter. And then once again, I can make it dimmer. So I do like it. It's very simple, very quick ease of use. Let's go ahead and turn that off and set that to the side. Once again, same application I would use for the MSR, I would use for the Romeo 5. Just go ahead, sighting in a gun, having fun uh, in the backyard, doing some small little stress courses here and there or rifle courses. But would I trust either one of those two for serious work? Like my life is in defense? Maybe. But uh, just right off the rip, I would not want to. I would have to drop test this. I would have to, you know, bang it around a few times on some trees or climbing a fence with my guns and then seeing how it holds up. Does it hold zero? Um, you know, did the screen crack? Not the screen, but the actual glass in the front, the objective or the diopter end, did that crack? I haven't tested those like that. That's what SIG's job is. That's what all these companies' jobs are. And when they do drop test these and stuff like that, that's what's gonna determine my application of it. Uh, the next one is probably the one I've utilized the most. And that is the Bushnell TRS-26. Um, so you can see right here, Bushnell on the bottom and then on the top it's got AR optics. And I think it says the same thing on that side too. Now I do love this one. And the reason why I love it is because I had previously the Bushnell TRS-25, which became a really, really good optic for me that's now on a, a, a firearm I no longer own, or it was for my ex. Um, so I like it. I like how big the objective and the actual diopter area is. So this one right here, by looking at it, it has a much, to me, a much bigger viewpoint than this. Same with the objective lens, the part that actually absorbs all the light. It's bigger on the TRS-26. Um, it's got two dials up and down 
So right here it's got up and then down. Same sort of thing, you can look at me and I can go ahead and make this brighter if I want or if I just hold it down, it should go off. And that's it. So very quick. Everything with an adjustment, windage elevation should be pretty obvious how to do it. You can laser bore sight these. I do have a laser bore sight, but once you do that, go ahead, take it to the range, confirm that you're gonna be on paper and then go ahead and adjust it to how you shoot. 150 for the last two. So the Romeo 5 and the TRS-26 are both 149. Uh, remember I stated earlier that the MSR has 20,000 hours, advertised 50,000 hours for the um, Romeo 5 and the TRS-26, um, I think it's the same thing, 50K, 50,000 hours. Now, once again, none of these are on max blast setting at all. These are just on some generic low power setting, probably something you can't see that well, um, or night vision mode. Um, but yeah, you can leave these on for a while and they will last for a while. Uh, move and these are these three is what are the ones I said that are under 500 or under 200 because of their price point moving up uh, Before me now I have an EOTech. So I have an EOTech XPS 3 states right here on this black piece and I love this I have a lot of EOTechs to be honest with you I probably I probably have more EOTechs than anything else and you can see that one right here. It has the single dot inside the 65 MOA ring with the up, down, left, and right ticks. And very simple, right? It's got an up, it's got a down for brightness setting. Hit the small button in the, in the center. Like you can see me now, if I hit the small button in the center, you, it should instantly turn off NVD and then turn back on when I hit it again. And to turn it off, you just hit the up and down button at the same time, like I'm gonna do now, and boom, optic is off. Uh, I believe EOTech offers a thousand hours on that, which is still a lot, but that's another reason why I, I just turn them off. I never want to get comfortable with just leaving an optic on. If I accidentally leave an optic on for months and it's still working, that's a testament to that brand, but it's nothing I would just want to do when I genuinely have an on off switch. Um, so yeah, I'm going to use that. And I think this one goes for $735. So vastly different in price compared to the first three. I can probably buy the first three and some more so for 150 150 that's 300 for the two more expensive and then the 99 dollar one so that's 450 so i can still buy all three of these plus one more of either one of them and be under the, the budget for this one eotech is it worth it this eotech specifically um well not this one but this brand specifically has seen a lot of combat it has been tested in combat people have had their glass in the front break uh, get shot out, get hit with shrapnel, and it still works. They were still able to put that holographic sight right on target and uh, do what they had to do. These first three were red dots, and the EOTech is a holographic sight. Although people will say everything's a red dot, I kind of understand why, because it's a dot and it's red. But the way it's parallax, the way it is, if I was to move my head around, that 65 MOA dot will still be on the target. My head does not matter where it's at. If it's on target, it's on target. The red dots, however, will move around with your head and you may look this way and see the dot at a place that's really not, and that may not be your point of impact. So that's another thing when you're getting into price points on firearms and optics is you're gonna get what you pay for. So remember, anything less than $200, you should expect less than $200 um, type of work, but the minute you start paying for hundreds of dollars getting up there, you start to ask yourself, why is this one so much more than the ones over here? Application is my, is my point. Uh, these have been drop tested, as you can see on the actual EOTech on the body, the housing. So the top of the housing is essentially a hood, a protectant hood that you can also see from the front. That is to stop it from being hit with certain things. So that will take a lot of the blunt uh, force by hitting things so you're not actually damaging the housing that the battery's in and that the glass is in and the little laser that shines back up so you can see it. That's very different than the rest of these. These ones right here, if they get hit, they're getting hit directly, direct impact. Um, so yeah, that's that. Here's another uh, EXPS3. Here's an older version that takes a different type of battery. 
And then here's an even older version that takes AA batteries on EOTEX. So um, currently there's four EOTEX right here and there's, a, there's quite a bit more upstairs. We're not gonna talk about that though. Moving on to one that's more expensive than the EOTEC is gonna be the Aimpoint Comp M4. This one on their website that I found was $9.99. So let's just go ahead and skip the BS and call it $1,000. And as you can see right here, that's what it looks like. It has a very, very good crisp dot and I do love it. So by me um, turning this thing on or off, I might be able to do this on camera and I might not. Nope, I'm not. So let me go ahead and you can hear, I'm gonna go ahead and just click that off and you can see that there's nothing. And then just to turn it back on clockwise, I'm gonna max it out and there's the dot. So it's very, very simple. This takes one single AA battery. So once again, I'm gonna turn it off. There's no point in having this thing on just for the sake of having it on. Uh, I think I mentioned this on a previous video as well. So I have the chicken wire, anti-glare, um, something like that on the top. It does sit on top of your Picatinny rail with a thumb wheel. The one thing I don't like about this, honestly, and the EOTech is this. These both, regardless of how big their footprint is, they both have a single bar that goes across the Picatinny rail. Whereas the uh, TRS-26, I believe, has two. Two little bars that go across the Picatinny rail, which give it a little bit more of a solid lockup system. And that's a feature you find on more expensive uh, optics. Um, single bars kind of to me are, you know, whatever. Now, if they work, they work. So don't change it. If it works, then obviously go with that. They both have a thumb wheel like the EOTech. You can just go ahead and twist that down. Um, same with this aim point. You can go ahead and just unlock this and then twist it down on top of your Picatinny rail and it should be good to go. These have been drop tested. These have been battle tested. These have taken life. I'm not stating that the Bushnell and both SIGs haven't been used in a defense situation. I'm saying they were not designed from the ground up to be used in a defense situation for hard use like military, law enforcement, and contractors would uh, abuse these things. Um, the last one I want to talk about is the most expensive one that I have, and it's ridiculous. So this is the Trijicon ACOG. This is a four by 32. Um, you might be able to see me in it. So if you can see me in that right there, that's just because of the actual like tritium and fiber optic stuff like that. So if I cover that up, you may or may not be able to see anything. And then the minute I take my hand off of it, you'll notice that the light comes back on because it's driven that way. And just above it is the RMR, which is motion sensor activated. And you can see the dot as well on that. I like this. It does have two, the footprint, it has two bars, like you would assume something with a footprint almost as long as that, that it would have two bars. It also is back heavy, so a lot of the weight is back here. So the way that this actual scope, this is called a scope by the way, it's a fixed four power scope and not a red dot. Although it does have an illuminated reticle with bullet drop compensation, some people would just call it a red dot because they look inside and they see a dot or some sort of hash mark or reticle that's red. You can see that on one of my LPVOs. I think I have the primary arms one to six. It can be used as a small red dot at certain distances as well. So this one right here retails anywhere from $22 to $2,400 from what I can find on ACOG's website. And once again, that's ridiculously expensive to some people. And so this ACOG right here, this setup with the RMR on top, costs more than the rest of these optics probably combined. So about a thousand for this, 735 for this, so that's 1700. Plus these two right here, that's another 300, that's 2100. Plus this is another 100, that's 22. So for these five optics that you saw previously, still costs less than this one ACOG with the RMR combo. And yes, 100%, this is a battle proven. ACOG. This has probably been the most utilized uh, optic I've ever seen on a Marine M4 uh, being on deployment and working with a lot of Marines during my deployments. And yeah, a lot of people love it. You can, you can kind of go out a little further with that four power, that fixed four power with a little bit of a bullet drop compensation. And then when targets 
um, get closer, you already have that RMR trained at a specific distance and you're still able to engage threats pretty accurately. Once again, drop testing, everything else, the ruggedness, how beefy it is, all of these things, the material, what type of aluminum or plastic is involved is going to determine the price point on these optics as well. So I don't want people to get wrapped up thinking they need to spend X amount of money or is, are you paying for a name only? Sometimes you 100% are paying for a name, but you're paying for that name that was actually, um, like, uh, became very reputable based on what it was for. So if everyone swears by a specific brand and they put their life on the line for it, that name automatically gains a lot more um, reputation, like a better reputation for that, and therefore they can charge you more. Um, a lot of T&E, test and evaluation, goes into these companies as well. You do have entry-level optics. Every company does, even Vortex has entry-level optics and red dots that are just for the average daily shooter, the background operator, the backyard operator, whatever you want to do. And then they also have things for people who are going downrange, snipers, uh, normal ground force guys that, you know, they have different premium lines and I see nothing wrong with that. But all of these optics, as you see right here, have been utilized on different weapon systems I have. Um, like I stated before, I recently just took this off. So I've used this more than anything. This was on my uh, 300 blackout pistol. And I currently swapped it out with another EOTech EXPS3, which is currently on it right now. And I have not shot it yet. I've shot many EOTechs, but I haven't shot the EOTech on my 300 blackout and got the sighted in. I'll probably do that this Saturday. And that's just one of the things I wanted to talk about. If I don't like it, this TRS-26 is going right back on that EOTech, or not EOTech, my 300 blackout pistol. And the EOTech will come off and go on another build because that's just the way I am. If it's not broke, don't fix it. But same time, understand, all of these things have their purpose. They all have a pretty decent hour rating. Um, I believe even this uh, aim points hours are 80,000 hours. So this one boasts 80,000 hours or eight years of continuous use and half a million hours on MVG mode or night vision mode. So once again, I'm not gonna uh, test that theory personally. I I'm gonna turn it off as I stated earlier. Um, and once again, this, uh, I believe this is a 1632 battery in this RMR from Trijicon. And obviously the rest of this optic is lit up by the tritium and fiber optic. So yeah, that's that. If you have any questions, put them down in the comment section below. Thanks for watching my video. Let me know where I was probably off a little bit. And if you want to see anything else similar to this later on, this is PH Darren and I'm out. Peace.